everyone, welcome back. On this video we're going to talk about ATM machines. If you haven't already, please click the like button and subscribe to this channel. We're going to be talking about where to purchase one, where, how to get a location, bank accounts, uh, corporation statuses, uh, how to fill it, how to place it, how to install it, um, all that good stuff. So what we're going to talk about is a couple different types of ATMs and etc. And then of course how you make money on it. Alright guys, so today what we're going to be talking about is ATM machines and making passive income using those. Uh, right here behind me as you can see I have a Gen Mega ATM machine. Uh, this is one of the first ones that I've ever gotten and I'm um, going to tell you a little bit about it. So first of all, this one is out of service right now. I pulled it from a location that wasn't doing very well. Uh, they were affected by COVID and uh, they don't really allow people to sit in their waiting room at all right now, which is where the ATM is at. So uh, I'm going to move it to a different location. But a little bit about it, this is the Gen Mega 2500. It's got a nice ATM illuminated logo there your standard buttons, keypads, uh, this is where you put your card in, this is where your receipt comes out of, uh, your dispense money comes out of there. And what I do with all my ATMs is I wrap them in graphics. Uh, so as you can see this one was at Aqua Car Wash. Uh, so on both sides there. Because I like to give them a little bit of extra advertising but also customize it to the place that it goes in. When you get ATMs, you get a set of keys with them to do different things. Once you get a set up here, there is a little key uh, lock back here. This is what opens up your ATM to the inside. This is where your power is at to turn the AC on. Um, you got your, well, I don't have paper in it right now, but this is your uh, roll of paper and you got a little feeder button here and you got different internet connections you got ethernet and um, dial up and um, you got USB ports and everything like that if you want to go wireless or if you want to um, you know hook it up to a Wi-Fi or anything like that um, it's got tons of different options in it and the motherboard is inside of there uh, which you can tap into and do customized things which I'm not that far advanced in it and then down below here, get my key out of here. Uh, then you open up this lock, and this is where all your money's going to be at. And inside here has got a master lock. Um, this thing is like incredibly impossible to break. It's an SNG, which is top of the line. Uh, I'm going to enter my password real quick. And you just turn the handle. And this one, I only have one cassette um, case in here, so you just pull this out, and then this is where your money is going to be stored. And you take a different key, it goes into this one, and then all you do is you would slide this back, uh, put all your bills in here, press the little release tab, and it locks them in. Once you're all done, you just close it up and slide it right back into the crack. This is your reject bin, uh, so if any bills get jammed or uh, don't dispense correctly, they get rejected back into here. You flip this open and usually every time you fill it up, you might have one or two sitting in here. You don't want to put those back in the box because once they're rejected, it's probably going to get rejected again. So just go ahead and put that in your pocket or back in the bank. And uh, you need to clean a uh, little conveyor thing here. Uh, the bill dispenser from time to time. It's got sensors and all on it. And also on the uh, card thing here, they make these little um, like cleaning cards. You stick it in kind of like a credit card and pull it out a few times. That cleans the inside so it can read the cards better. And then you have your, uh, your power, um, internet cords, everything down here in the bottom. And you got tons of holes to bolted down to the floor. Um, I generally only do four or six. Some people go crazy and put like a dozen, uh, which I think is overkill because at that point someone's probably using a 
a truck to yank it out of the ground so there's no saving it at that point. And when you're ready to close it up, as soon as you turn the hand, it beeps and that lets you know that it is now secure. You don't have to type in any codes or anything. It's now locked, you can't get in it. For functions, uh, you can go in here, enter a special code, enter the operator, enter a password. And so you have tons of different options. There is a Bitcoin for crypto. I have never used it. Some people use that. Um, but you go into ATM operator. If you go to the transaction setup, you can change the dispense limit of how much maximum money someone can take out. What denominations. I have only 20s in there. I have another ATM that's got 10s and 20s both, so that would show two different fields. Fast cash is instead of typing anything in, if you just want 20 bucks, you just hit 20 and it dispenses $20. Um, so different options in there. There's a hundred different options of things in here, so I'm not going to show them all. Uh, host setup is one of the things you would do. Um, key management and uh, routing ID and things like that. You would the health check is automatic but some of these when you're setting it up you only have to do a few different ones and it does it all automatically system setup just set the clock language you know things like that passwords um, so just real basic stuff usually takes about 20 to 30 minutes to fully set one of these up when you get it from the factory Settlements are when you're at the end of the day, when you uh, want to total all your money for the month or since you were last here. You can run journals and reports uh, and things like that. You got your serial numbers and your terminal numbers, um, bill counts, uh, which I need to clear that out because there's no more in it right now. So that's kind of the basics of, a, uh, of an ATM. Now there are some laws you have to follow with ATMs. Uh, such as a $200 minimum dispense limit, so it can't dispense any less than $200. There's certain labels and all that you have to have on your ATM, which I'll show you. So, for instance, this one, uh, let people know that there is a fee to use a withdrawal. All balance inquiries are always free, um, but if you have any questions, Vinco is my processor. Uh, so if there's any kind of issues with the ATM, as in lost money or the transaction's not going right, it's not reading the card, whatever, they can call it Vinco. They'll take care of all that. And another one is operator products or suspicious activities. If you notice that there's a card skimmer or anything like that, um, you know, definitely call customer service. And I put mine up on the top. Um, just let people know that uh, if, they're, if the... Um, you know, the owner of the store or anything has any uh, issues or somebody wants their own ATM, they can contact me directly. And you have a little sticker for broken cards, may get jammed and require ATM repairs. Um, if you put in one that's got a crack in it, it will, um, you know, it could just get stuck in there and it's going to be a huge mess for you to take out and you may have to end up replacing your card reader, which is not something you want to do. Something that's critical with ATMs is having a manual. So this is a basic Gen Mega manual and inside of it you have it just teaches you everything about it. I mean, I contact Gen Mega directly um, for major issues instead of reading through this. It's just so much easier for them to walk you through it on the phone. But uh, this thing is like 300 pages or something. But one of the best parts about this is the error code list. So it lets you know that when it comes up on there, it'll just give you an error code and so you can read all about it and tell you exactly what that means and uh, and how to fix it. Uh, that's critical because if you come in and you get an alert that there's a problem with your ATM, it'll give you a code and you could say um, receipt paper jam, then you'll know, hey, there's something wrong with the receipt paper. You can just run in, pop open the, the back of it, fix the receipt paper, and you're good to go. Uh, so this is critical. 
when I'm ready to place this ATM again, I'm going to rip all the graphics off and I'm going to do an, another tutorial video uh, showing you exactly how to wrap your ATM if you choose to do it in the future or if you want to just put ATM letters or anything like that on it. I'm going to show you the whole setup process of how I transport it and carry it, how I bolt it to the ground, how I fill it, uh, everything that you need to know so you can get started with your own. Uh, if you want to start in a business and you don't know how to form a LLC or, or any kind of a business entity um, or how to do a bank account, banks are very notorious for not liking ATM businesses and they will fight you on it and they'll uh, you know shut down your account and things like that so there's certain banks that you can use in certain accounts and you gotta let them know you're not a money services broker uh, which is an MSB uh, that's something that you have to be licensed for and it's completely different you gotta be a whole company and everything and uh, what we do is you know we're completely different because we're not trading currency for other currency or anything like that we're only dispensing cash for people and um, so there's just certain guidelines you need to follow, but it's incredibly easy. I would say after about three or four hours, you're set up and ready to go and ready to get started in the business. But we'll go over that at a later point. Depending on who your processor is for your ATM, you may get a website such as this one. Since I use Venco, they uh, use um, Switch Commerce for their um, processing application um, it's cloud-based I can go over here to terminals and it'll show me um, right now I only have one active out there so when I click on that it gives me all the information about the ATM it lets me know it's currently active master keys are bound um, things are enabled um, there's no issues with it which would be right here on alerts it's a zero alerts it lets you know if it's offline and active and complete low cash balance anything like that it tells you which ATM which location what the error code is anything like that um, but anyways back on here it tells you all about your terminal statistics of uh, how much you're doing how much is being dispensed right here's your recent transactions uh, I would say balance if it was a balance inquiry. Luckily, I've had all withdrawals, which is really great. And it just lets you know how many bills are currently in your machine. This one I have 10s and 20s both in, how much is in there. So, uh, so yeah, when you get an ATM, um, you should get something similar to this. So that's a little bit about ATMs. I hope you learned a lot. And uh, when I get more placed out there and start showing you installs and wrapping and all that, I hope you get more excited about it. That's all I got for now. Thanks for joining and make sure you hit that like and subscribe button so you can learn a lot more about these things.